more and more. Safe empty state. What is a safe empty? What, what do we mean when you, when you set an object to be in an empty state? Okay? As my friend was saying over there, we have two different type of, types of things. Empty and a safe empty state. An empty state is a possible thing. It means an object can be empty and be valid. It's like a coffee cup that is empty. You still have a coffee cup, but it's empty. It's not a coffee cup that you cannot use, right? A safe empty state is an empty state in which a disabled object, an object that is impossible, will stay in. In your case, you have a mark, right? For mark, zero is not a safe empty state for a mark because a mark can be zero. A safe empty state could be minus 300, which we can go just one and off, that's where that'll be nice. So we can put minus one. If you set the object to minus one, it becomes an impossibility, which means you can always check for that. If the mark is less than zero, this mark is in a safe empty state. I know it's invalid. I know there is something wrong with it. Or it's not set, or whatever reason you want that flag to be. As I mentioned, lots of programmers used to actually have a flag when, for example, let's say you want to have a container for a number, and that number can be negative and positive. Then how do you set an empty state for that? Because negative values are acceptable in that class. If that's the case, you can literally create a Boolean value, add to it, call it empty or invalid or something and set it to true and check that flag to see if your object is invalid or not. So not necessarily you use the properties of the class to set it in a, into a safe empty state. You only do that if the properties of class, they have an impossible state. They have values that you can put that is impossible that if I have a person, if I have a student, and student has a property age. To set the student in a safe empty state, I can set the age to minus one. Why? Because a negative age is impossible. Are you okay with that? Right? So things like that. But if the student did not have an age in it, and all the other things could be possible, then you create a flag, you call it Boolean safe empty state. If it's true, you're in safe empty state. If it's not, you're not. So you can do that too. But always try to find an impossible state in the thing and use that one for safe empty state. That was number one. That I was noted that lots of people don't understand the difference between them. Number two, flush keyboard, shame on you. You should be able to do it in two seconds. So let's not talk about that. You did it in IPC 144, okay? Just write a loop, one by one read the thing. If it's not new, stop. That's it. So if, if, if it's not new line, keep going. If it is, you stop. Flush keyboard, we have done it in IPC 144. There's no thing. For read, you have every right to be confused. Because the read system, the reading system, the I.O. system in, IO in C++ is an object-oriented thing. First, most important thing. Did I keep you? Are you OK? OK. <laughs> Most important thing is this, that I, th I don't think I, I got across the, the message uh, clear enough. Uh, if you recall, I was telling like we are in college now. Because we are in college, the things you see that we have on the sequence of the things that I'm teaching, not necessarily I'm going through all of them. When I say we teach this, you go through it. If I did not cover anything, you study them and then come with questions. This is members and privacy stuff, right? But when you scroll down, you will see over here, we are going into input and output. So these are all the input output stuff that you should have studied yourself before coming here today, OK? And to make sure that you are studying them, we're going to have a quiz the next time you're coming in, especially on that and constructors and destructors. So careful, study them. But let me explain to you how it works now that we have the time, OK? First thing we need to do is to close the door so we don't people hear people talk. Secondly, what we can do over here is this. 
the action of reading is done through one agent in C++ called iStream. iStream works for input stream. It's a class. Its job is to read from the cons from from input, not console, from a stream, stream of things. It could be file, it could be a network connection, it could be a keyboard, anything that you read from. That's how object orientation works. We have a bicycle, we learn how to ride a bicycle. If tomorrow I get a motorcycle, I know how to ride a bicycle, so going on two wheels is no problem. I just need to know extra stuff about a motorcycle to be able to ride it. That's how it works. It's the same thing over here. We're going to learn how CN works, and from there we're going to learn everything else. And that was all the hoopla about it. But now, how it actually works. CN is an instance of iStream. They instantiated it, and they called it CN. So CN is an object. It's not a class. You say integer i. i is the object. Int is the class, correct? Integer i, i is the object, int is the class. I stream c in. C in is the object, i stream is the class. Okay? Are we okay down to here? And we have the exact same thing for c out. C out is the object, they instantiated it, the class is all stream. Are we okay? Now. C in is a very, very shy object. When I say shy, what does it mean? You tell it to read, and then you put something in front of it. It looks at that thing. For example, in here, I'm saying C in mark. It looks at mark, mark is double, starts reading a double. Good. Goes through it, life is beautiful. You tell it, read M out of. That's an integer. It knows it has to read an integer. How? Overloading. You have done it. Okay? But the way it works is that it reads, 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 stops when it can't. So if I say 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, and tell to C in read an integer, C in will read 1, 2, 3, 123, and then it reaches to A, it can't read anymore, right? Did it read anything? Yes, it read 123. So this was success. It read an integer and stopped. Okay? If I say C in, read a string, and I put 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, it's going to read 1, it's going to read 2, it's going to read 3. Is A a string? Yes. A, B, C, data is no more, it stops. So it was successful, it read 1, 2, 3, A, B, C into a string. So that's how it works, right? But if you tell to C in, read an integer, and put A, B, C, what happens? C wants to read, comes to keyboard, it sees there is data, and then looks at it, says, I cannot read this. It's an A. They told me int. Int needs digits. I fail. It goes into a fail state, and as soon as it does, it won't answer to you anymore. Finished. Very shy thing. After that, Anything else you tell to C in to do, you say C in ignore, I say, he says, I don't care. You say C in get in something, he says, I, anything that you do with C in, it will completely ignore it. As if you called an empty function. So if it cannot read the mark, ignore will not work, out of will not work. It's just going to bypass through it as empty functions. That's how it works. The only way you can make C in to work again is to tell it, hey, I know things went bad. Relax. Clear yourself now. Deep breath. Now start working again. And that's C in dot clear. When you do C in dot clear, you acknowledge to C in that I understood something was wrong and I'm going to fix it. Now try again. That's why in my logic in here, I have three C ins back to back and only one fail. If the first one fails, the rest are ignored. I'm going to catch the fail. If the second one fails, the next is going to, it gets ignored and, and, and it keeps going like that. 
So if you put the proper double at the beginning and ignore a character and integer fails, I still get the fail. OK? That's number one. That's number two. How does this work? I am putting C in mark. So I'm saying read a double. So it reads the double. Then I have, I'm having a slash, right? Then I'm saying ignore one character, which means that slash can be slash, can be A, can be X, can be W. Any non-number non thing. It's going to ignore one character. And then it's going to continue reading. If it still can read, good job. Nothing is failed. It comes over here. We'll talk about this later. OK? But if in any case it fails over here, it comes to this stage. It says, I failed. And I'm going to say, OK, I understood you fail. First, let's create the object. Whatever we read, let's ignore everything. OK? Then I'm going to set success to false. So tell to the others who call read, read, hey, something went wrong. OK? Then flush keyboard. What does flush keyboard do? You've seen it up there. It keeps reading until it reaches to backslash n. Correct? Now the question is that why I am recalling flush keyboard anyway, even when it's successful read? The reason is that the nature of CEN means read until you can't. Correct? So it's going to keep reading, 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 and it stops. So even if it's successful, at least you have a backslash n at the end. Because anybody entering something on keyboard ends its work with hitting the enter key, right? So if you want to read an integer, you put 123, you hit enter, still you have a backslash n inside your keyboard. So if everything is good, flush keyboard will only read one backslash n. If, if anything is bad, flush keyboard first will get rid of all the garbage, then it eats the backslash n. So Success, flush keyboard reads only one backslash in. Not success, flush keyboard will empty everything and then. And therefore, my read works. And seeing works like that for everything. Remember that. OK? So when we get to files, and I'll teach you how files work, that file thingy is actually a child of the same class of CN. So they all work like their grandparents and parents. When I tell you how to read from the file, you see it's going to be the exact same way, only from a file. That's it. OK? So that was it. The rest of the stuff, steady. You have a quiz the next day you're coming in. OK? On these stuff. All right. Any questions? Sin yeah. uh, clear and sin number 18 and number 15 sin ignore okay. yeah those are predefined functions oh yeah they are members of cn okay uh, anytime you see any function anytime you see any function is with a dot beside it it means it's a member of that anytime yes these are if it's personal question no just about this because i'm recording okay. after that anybody have any question on this lecture Yes. Read it, and you'll see there are so many ways you can call ignore. Ignore can be called in like three, four different ways. This is one of them. If you don't mention how, it only ignores one character. It's like get. Get can be called in five, six different ways. One is that you don't put an argument, and it returns a character. Another one, you actually put a character inside the argument, it becomes a reference. So it returns it as a reference. You can do it that way, too. Anyways, so there are so many different ways that you can call get. Read that thing, and you'll know how it works. OK, uh, lecture over.